Hi guys. All right. So I am back with number three of the 50 architects you should know women edition. And this is none other than Louise Bethune. I think I said that right, but people called her Lulu. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to also call her Lulu. Lulu was born July 21st in 1956 in Waterloo, New York. Her older brother sadly passed away when she was young, so she was the only daughter of Emma Williams and Dalson Blanchard. I think I said that right. Um, as a young child, she was teased by a boy in her school and that said, Lulu, don't be silly. Girls can be architects. And so that, of course, fueled a fire in her to prove him wrong. Um, and in the process of researching the profession to prove him wrong, she actually fell in love with it. Um, and so that's what she decided to do. She decided to um, become an architect. I, I think we're going to see a trend here, side note, um, that a lot of these women were told no or were told or were made fun of or were dismissed when they said that they wanted to become architects or engineers or contractors. and because of that was the fuel that they needed to like pursue the profession so for all y'all out there stop telling us no because then we're gonna prove you wrong anyway sadly she fell ill so she was homeschooled until she was 11 years old but not to worry she had the best homeschool teachers her dad was a mathematician and a principal and her mom was a school teacher so a girl was covered. She, I'm sure, was taught better than most of the kids in the school. Um, after graduating high school, she traveled for about two years, um, kind of working odd jobs and studying in preparation to attend Cornell University. Um, and in the process, one of the jobs that she found in 1876 was with an architect named Richard Waite, White, W-A-I-T-E. You figure it out. Um, and, you know, she kind of figured I'm already working in the industry. So she gave up her um, plans to go study at Cornell University and just decided to get, you know, hands on uh, work experience. She worked there for full time, you know, eight to six every day uh, for very little pay <laughs> for five full years. And then she decided it was time to open her own architecture firm. At only 25 years old, she was the first woman architect in America. So she wasn't licensed because licensing didn't come um, or wasn't a thing until 1898. So, um, you know, she was the first woman architect. Um, no, there was no licensing back then. Um, in 1881, she married Robert Bethune. God, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and then he joined her architecture firm. So girlfriend already had her shit together and he just hopped on the, on the bandwagon. Um, so she opened her firm in Buffalo, New York. Um, and thankfully she opened it right where, right when um, the Buffalo school system or the New York school system was expanding. So most of her body of work and most of her commissions are schools or were schools. Um, they designed a total of 18 schools all over New York. Um, but they also designed other things. So they designed a, um, a plant for the Iroquois Plant Company, um, the Erie County Women's Penitentiary, so a women's prison, that's got to be a cool um, commission, uh, the Denton Cotier and Daniels Music Store, which at the time pushed boundaries, design boundaries, because it was the first, one of the first buildings designed um, strictly made out of steel and concrete pads. Um, that wasn't really used back then so um you know kind of pushed some some con some design and construction boundaries there um she always designed all her schools with super wide hallways and two exits because of fire safety so up until her most of her most of the schools and most of the buildings were designed with uh you know very narrow hallways i mean if anybody lives in a house that was built in like the 1900s um, you know, your hallways are like itty bitty. Um, so she didn't do that. She designed them with nice wide hallways and then also two fire exits. Um, because fire danger was, you know, a, a big thing back then. Um, she also went on to design a transformer building that powered all of the Buffalo trolleys, which I thought that was kind of cool. 
Um, anyway, so she they designed a lot of really cool things. Um, some of her design requirements or design things that she did, like the you know wide hallways and the two fire exits, are now actually code. Um, now they're a mandated uh, code for every building in California or in the United States. So. Um, she was kind of a, pione a pioneer when it came to fire safety and introducing, you know, what we now call our standard international code. Um, but her, fir her most famous commission was the Lafayette Hotel in Buffalo, New York. It took six years to build and a whooping one million dollars. Um, when it opened in 1906, it was regarded as one of the most perfectly appointed and magnificent hotels in the country. It was made of steel frame and concrete in a French Renaissance style. And we'll go through her body of work here in a second. Um, what I could find, because there's not a lot, you know, from back then. But there, there's still some stand. Some of her work is still standing, and I'll show you that. Um, and then I'll show you some drawings of the stuff that isn't standing anymore. But I was able to find drawings. Um, every room came standard with hot and cold water and a telephone which back then were considered luxuries. Well, let me tell you, I would have not survived in that era. I'm sorry, but hot water is a need, not a luxury for me. That is a need. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have made it. Louis became, or Lulu, became a member of the Western Association of Architects in 1885 and became the first woman elected to the AIA in 1888. She was a true advocate for women's rights. In 1891, she spoke about women and architecture at a union conference, um, saying that she had been invited to speak about women in architecture, but she changed the title to women and architecture because otherwise you are assuming a connection which is hardly safe to assert, quote. Um, she felt that, the, that at the time there was a need for women doctors and women lawyers, but she said, and quote, there is no need for a woman architect. No one wants her, no one yearns for her, and there is no special line in architecture to which she is better adapted for than a man. She has exactly the same work to do as a man. When a woman enters a profession, she enters not as a woman, but as only an architect. She always believed that men and women in architecture were on level playing fields, um, that they were both equally capable of creating the same amount of work, the same quality of work. Um, she didn't like that people distinguished between, oh, this is a male architect or a female architect. She said, that makes no sense to me because we, you know, create the exact same body of work. Um, there's, there's absolutely no need for distinction. So. Um, I love that about her, you know, she's setting the boundaries. I love it. Um, in 1893, she refused to enter the Colombian Exposition Competition um, to design a women's building, mainly because they were only offered a thousand dollar awards as opposed to the men who were offered ten thousand dollar awards. And she was a huge equal pay advocate. So she was like, I ain't doing that. And then also the, the judges that they were appointed to judge the comp their, you know, the, their side of the competition were subpar. They were just inexperienced and um, didn't even know how to read architectural plans. And so most of the awards that they, you know, granted to women were granted out of like politics. So if somebody knew somebody or somebody had the money to like pay off someone, one of the judges. Um, so she was like, I, I don't want any part of that. I want my work and my expertise to be what's being judged here and I want to be compensated exactly like the men are being compensated. So yes, honey. Um, she was also an advocate, like I said, for equal pay. She believed that women who are pioneers in any profession should be proficient in every department and that women complete, oh, sorry, that women's complete emancipation is an equal pay for equal service. So she didn't believe that women should go into an industry and settle for you know one niche or um find the one thing that they're good at and they're like okay you know i'm gonna stick here she you know really believed that if you want to be a pioneer in any industry you need to know the whole industry and you need to be well versed in all the 
you know parts of what goes into your industry which i absolutely love like i became a contractor because of that and i became an interior architect because of that and i became a landscape architect because of that um i i wanted to be able to know every aspect of my industry and um you know i i, I think that's important and i agree with her um, she also, encour also encouraged women to be ambitious. She said, you know, why are you settling for these little projects? Um, you should be going for the large projects, the projects that are usually only reserved for men. Stop, like, you know, um, like belittling yourself or just not going for the stuff that you should be going for just because you assume that it's going to go to a man. You know, go for it. Be ambitious. Um, and... Finally, Lulu passed away on December 18th, 1913 at the age of 57, but not before she accomplished everything that she accomplished and also was a badass women's advocate. So I love that about her. Um, she was a really fun one to learn about. There wasn't that much, you know, out in, in the Google world about her, um, but I was able to find a couple of books and some, you know, Wikipedia and whatnot. But um, I really enjoyed reading about her and learning about her um, being able to be an architect and, and be like a badass at it, but then also fight for women's rights and, um, you know, hop on you know, the suffragette movement and, and fight for that and especially fight for equal pay because, um, I mean, that's obviously something that we're still struggling with today. So anyway. I love that about her. Okay, so let's go through her body of work. First up is Lafayette Hotel. So as you can see, it is definitely French Renaissance. It is gorgeous. These are two renderings um, that were done um, either of it or for the actual build, um, which I admire so much because I cannot draw like this to save my life. I am all on a computer. So this is amazing to me. This is an actual picture of the Lafayette Hotel, which is still standing, and it just went through a $35 million renovation. Um, so I think I'm going to try to stay there one of these days because I would love, love, love to just see what the inside of this looks and, um, and actually walk the halls that she at one point walked. That would be such an experience. This is school number eight. So this is one of her schools. Um, I'm assuming she numbered them one, two, three, you know, to 18. Um, so this is school number eight. And again, this is only a rendering because I don't believe that this school is up anymore. This is the Iroquois Door Company Industrial Building in Buffalo, New York. So the top is the drawing. Um, I'm assuming for the architectural rendering and then the um, second picture is the actual building as it stands uh, a few years ago because it has been renovated. This is Union School in Buffalo, New York. Another rendering or picture it looks like but then also I don't believe that it's operational anymore. And this is the Whitcop and Holmes headquarters. So this is a obviously a very very um, recent rendering i'm assuming it's being renovated um but this is what it actually looks like so you know very um cool building lots of brick i really really love the brick um especially the red brick so um she did some really cool arches on the windows and it looks like it's like office space at the top and then retail space at the bottom this is the Chandler Street Industrial Building in Buffalo, New York. Um, what I really, really liked about this building, I don't know. So obviously the top picture is um, one of the original pictures, but the second picture is obviously, again, another very current render. Um, and I can't tell and I couldn't find whether that bridge was there from the beginning or if that's something that is being proposed now. but. That is so cool. I love that. Um, the connecting of two buildings. Um, if that was done back in the day and that's actually how it was originally designed, that had to have been a um, like a very innovative design, I'm assuming. I don't know, but I that was super cool. And again, it's the brick um, facade, which I really love. 
and this is the Chandler Street Industrial Building as it sits today. It has been purchased um, from what I can, from what I could find, and I do believe it's being renovated. And that's it. That's her body of work, guys. Again, I couldn't find too many buildings. I know that obviously the Lafayette Hotel is one of her most famous commissions and that's still standing. Um, and some of her industrial buildings are too, but um, I couldn't find too many other pictures of her um, commissions. But, um, you know, this was in like the 1800s, late 1800s. So um, the fact that they're still standing, pardon my dog, um, the fact that they're still standing is amazing to me. Guys. <laughs> Hush. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, that is our very first um, woman architect in the country, Lulu Bethune. I hope you enjoyed, guys. Can't wait to talk to you guys tomorrow about um, the next architect. I think I'm going to try to do someone a little bit more recent. Um, and I think uh, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, have a great day, guys. Go look at something pretty today because, again, life is way too short not to look at something pretty every day. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.